let me just give you a couple of examples of what we can do with these subjective machine vision techniques. So take computational aesthetics, for example. Um, this is one of the most popular branches of subjective machine vision, and it's about designing systems that, given an image, can automatically score it in terms of its beauty or uh, photographic quality, aesthetic appeal. And uh, in general, this is done by operationalizing photographic theories into visual features into a computer vision framework. So let me give you an example of a work we did in, in, this, um, in this context. And actually, this is a computational aesthetic algorithm specific for a, for a narrow image domain, which is the domain of portraits, so images with faces only. So we designed this computational portrait aesthetic framework able to score images of faces in terms of beauty. Note that we actually don't care whether the person depicted is beautiful or not. We just want to know whether the image composition is beautiful, knowing that there is a person in it. And the reason why we actually need a specific framework for faces is that because we know from several theories that faces occupy a specific place in our affective sphere. We perceive faces in a completely different way compared to other objects. And actually, photographers, when shooting pictures of people, should follow specific portrait photography rules, which convey the subject humanity. And so what we did is that we took a large data set of images annotated uh, with beauty degrees by humans, and then we design and compute features inspired by portrait photography. This means that we map each of the rules that photographer follows to shoot good portraits into a visual feature, into a number able to describe an aspect of the image. And then we give all these features um, that are built on top of deep learning frameworks to a machine learning algorithm, which will be able to distinguish in between good and bad portraits. And not only this algorithm works well for this task, but also because we carefully designed our features to be interpretable and to directly map portrait photography rules, we can also understand what makes a portrait beautiful from an algorithmic perspective. So for example, things like the sharpness of the face landmarks eyes and nose are positively indicators, positive indicators of, of portrait beauty. Then there are a group of features who's a, a positive indicator of portrait beauty, and there is a third group of features which actually we could literally put in the trash because they're not predictive at all for portrait beauty, but actually those are demographics features. So this, this tells us that no matter the age, the race, or the gender of the person depicted, if the photographer does a good artistic job, then the resulting portrait will be beautiful, which I think is a very nice message.